Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another review. Today we are in a bagged 08 Nissan R35 GTR and this is the Draggy 0 to 100. Point nine four seconds. Damn, just under five. Fuck, that was awful. That's awful? Nah, I'm not happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll oh. go again. <laughs> four point three three. I'm I'm more happy now, yeah. Yeah, four point three three? Yeah, I'm happy. Happy now. with that? Yeah. Mean, alright. <laughs> that was pretty good, that's pretty good. Here we go, zero hundred. First one was 4.5. We'll see if we can do it a bit better. You pretty much just mash your foot. I don't know how there's <laughs> skill involved, but okay. all right. Ready? Uh, yeah, go. Yeah. 4.3. 4.3? <laughs> hey, there we go. So 4.3, just like the owner. So yeah. I reckon that, yeah, it's pretty much... No, but you bet my first one. No, I bet, I bet, <laughs> That's why oh, I didn't want to say. I bet his first time, <laughs> my bet, my bet. <laughs> so here we are in the 2008 Nissan R35 GTR. I drove one of these a few years ago, back when I had my 350Z, well, maybe like two years ago. And I just remember the absolute power when you launch this thing. We didn't do launch launches today because uh, especially in these earlier generation GTRs, the bell housings are a bit dodgy, so owner didn't want to launch it, launch it, but 4.3 on the drag is pretty good. Um, this GTR isn't completely stock, obviously it's been bagged, some sick wheels, the tail lights and everything, we'll get into that more later. Um, but it's making around 550 horsepower at the wheels. 550 horsepower at the wheels, not bad at all. And yeah, that was a fun launch. So. Everyone knows the uh, 3.8 litre twin turbo V6 that comes in these cars, the VR38. Whew. Sounds incredible, it's just got such a unique sound. So, the first GTR that Nissan made was in 1969, that was the first generation. Nicknamed Hakasuka, uh, the first GTR came with a 2 litre and it was rear wheel drive, made like 160 horsepower. And you know, since then we had the second generation, which was quite similar, I think. Third generation was the R32 GTR, which sort of changed the game with the RB26, you know, and that's probably the second most infamous um, car Niss Nissan's ever made. Then we had the R33, which really stepped it up in terms of the technology, you know, all the stuff inside. The technology inside um, especially in the r33 you know for such an early car you know being made in the 90s it was really ahead of its time and then we had the r34 which is you know the most infamous japanese car ever made <laughs> and uh obviously here we are at the sixth generation So obviously they've gone from the R33 and R34 having the you know, 2.6 litre engines to up to you know a big 3.8. This thing has so much torque and so much horsepower from the factory and just a lot of room to tune it as well. Like this owner has done pretty much what everyone does first, downpipes, exhaust, some good wheels and some good suspension. The unique thing about this car is that it's on bags. So it's actually been bagged by Auto Stance here in Auckland. They make the custom air struts for each different model of car. And it's got the uh, airlift 3P management system here in the cockpit. So, you know, you can adjust the heights and everything. 
but I really wanted to test this car out and see how it performs on bags. I've been in a lot of bagged cars. I've been in a bagged 1200 horsepower Audi R8 and I couldn't tell the difference between that and coilovers. Same, uh, you know, auto stance bags on that one. I've been in a lot of bagged cars uh, over the last few years and I can tell every time I get in a new one that's been freshly bagged, it's got a bit of new technology, you know, it's got a, it's got a new brand of air struts, something. And every time I just, I can barely tell. And even just in the first few minutes of being in this GTR, it feels bloody good. So the exhaust is made by Dodson Motorsport as well as the downpipes. And it's just a catless downpipes all the way back, straight back to the exhaust. There's some nice tips on the end there. And it just sounds, just, just you know, typical, nice, crisp GTR sound. That's really the only way to describe it. Nice and loud when you need it to be. Sounds so good. So obviously this thing looks crazy when it's just slammed onto the ground. Sitting beautifully on these Worker Motion CR3P wheels. And uh, it's quite interesting, the air management system you know, this isn't the uh, height sensor constantly adjusting one, but it actually knows sort of where your exhaust sits. And so when we were filming those cinematics, you know, one corner of the car wouldn't go completely down because the exhaust was like one millimeter off the ground. It's pretty cool. But yeah, now we're out in the country, we're out in the corners. And I gotta say, like I've driven a, uh, the last UTI I drove, it had downpipes, exhaust. On that, it was stock, you know, stock suspension. And I cannot tell the difference, really, between, you know, that stock suspension and this. This is handling really nice. It's not too bumpy. It's not uncomfortable. It's not too, like, boaty. You know, it's not, it doesn't float. It just feels good. And we're just ripping around these corners so well. These Bridgestone. S007As on the corners. Woo! That feels good. Yeah, so these tyres, they're quite top end. I think it's one of the nicest tyres Bridgestone makes. Um, apparently, it's going to be on one of the new Lamborghinis from the factory. So, yeah, these tyres, you know, they don't play around. They stick so well. I'm just so in control. And obviously, you know, this car is quite heavy. It weighs two ton. And while you can feel how big it is, you know, it's a big, big car and it weighs a lot, but it's quite agile, like a lot more, especially with the one on bags, a lot more agile than I thought it would be. You know, I can get it going around the corners let's quickly change direction and just fly through here so we've just been uh you know flying around the corners for 15 or 20 minutes now and the brakes are starting to get a little bit hot uh you can hear it a little bit when we go around the corners and get some heavy braking then you know these are the stock Brembo brakes and you know when they're not really really hot or really really cold they you know they perform really really well but if you were to hit this car to a track or you're about to go on a big rally definitely would uh, recommend upgrading the pads at least if not the rotors and but yeah this thing especially in a straight line is just a crazy beast obviously the bags you know just make this car look so good especially on those work wheels but we got some nice custom uh, headlights and tail lights as well so the headlights are done by our local company called Ian Lightworks and they've made it so that the headlights have that sequential you know indication and it just look really good it kind of spices up the front end a bit and the tail lights on the back are just so nice I've never seen those on a GTR before um, they just have this really cool pattern and especially when they're in the shade or at night they just look no, they look so unique, I've, I've never seen them before. So the factory GTR seats aren't too bad, you know, they hold you in pretty well. But uh, the owner, John, has got these awesome custom Braum seats from California. And they're really nice, you know, he's got the, the white stitching on the leather and they got the carpet backs on them. And they just, they really hug you 
a little bit more than the stock GTR seats and they just look so good. So you can actually just get them You can get them, you know, custom embroidered for whatever kind of thing you like. So John made sure he wanted the logo, you know, in a certain position and you can get, you know, different colour stitching, stuff like that. So they really make the interior of this car a bit different. And you know, I'll be the first to say it, like most GTRs in New Zealand are stock, silver, maybe an exhaust, maybe a tune, and you know, while it is sort of expensive to, you know, this is like, uh, especially when you have to start buying things like brake pads, clutches, bell housings for these ones, you know, all that kind of stuff, it's, it's getting into almost like supercar territory um you know when it comes to expenses and you know you know you get the supercar performance so you kind of expect that now it's probably you know a lot less expensive than you know a lambo or a ferrari but especially when you start modding them and you want to make some big power you know if you want to make over eight or nine hundred on these things you got to start building the engine building the transmission stuff like that but damn for your money for like what you can get these cars for these days as we were on the way here, my friend was looking at buying one and you can get them for sometimes even under 60,000 New Zealand, which is just crazy. Um, you know, they, these cars, like this particular one in particular, it is 13 years old now. And, you know, I'd say that it's aged quite well. There's a few things in the interior maybe, you know, the interior looks a little bit old, but overall, like for a 13 year old car and for the value that you get, even if you spend 70 or 80, 90,000 on one of these, you get a lot of performance and a lot of fun out of it. So um, yeah, to wrap it up, I mean, I would say if you're on the fence about getting bags, you gotta try, you know, you gotta let someone that owns a bag car, you know, you gotta get them to let you drive it or you gotta at least go in one and experience it at least before you talk shit about it and honestly like i've been in so many bad cars now it's really convinced me to bag mine you know obviously a bit expensive but it's coming down and the quality of it is just going up you know so quick uh in terms of this car like man i cannot tell the difference between this and the stock suspension of this car which is you know it's not super performance orientated you know i think at the track this would probably you know just in the corners get outdone by someone that has some nice coilovers but when you can slam your car on the ground and then also fly around the corners you know every now and then it's quite a nice you know it's quite a nice setup to have and yeah this car just looks amazing it was really fun to drive and i hope you guys enjoyed all right well that's pretty much it review of the bagged r35 is done let me know what you think down below had a great time driving this thing thanks john that was, that was a sick time appreciate it bro and yeah see you next time